Hey yo, what up you guys? This is your boy the Kryptonian Sagan here bringing you another review for One Piece chapter 170. And I will say this right here. The obvious trolling aside, which I give a double fuck you to Oda for, but the obvious trolling aside, there was some great character development in this chapter. Plot progression, okay, decent, not the best, but the character development really stood out to me. In particular, you see development on Zoro's side, you see it on Usopp's side, and you definitely see it on Nami's side. This was this was a good chapter simply from a craft perspective when you look at character development. And I'm going to start off with Zoro. Now, the thing about Zoro is, is we know that he turned down an invitation from Baroque Works before, and we know that he was this famous pirate hunter, but we've never really just gotten into his uh, pirate hunting past like that. Like, we just know that, you know, he was going to be the greatest swordsman because the girl he trained with died, and we know that that whole pledge to be the greatest swordsman, you know, after he got beaten by Mihawk, we know that type of stuff was happening. However... What I found very interesting is the fact that he said, I'll join Baruch Works if you make me the boss. That is some straight ballsy shit. Like, that's the type, like, that's why I like Vegeta, right? Like, Vegeta got his ass kicked so many times, but he always got back up and said, huh, well, fuck you, I'm coming right back. Like, that's that shit that I like out of my characters, man. I like the arrogant characters. And I like the ones who just talk shit. So that I loved. And I love the fact that Zoro, when he pops up, you know, he starts slicing shit up as soon as he gets there and he saves Nami. Which, again, as far as character development, that's very in character. However, I like how Zoro very quickly deduced the fact that uh, Mr. One, his body was made out of uh, swords. That he can turn his body into swords, if you will. And so it's a battle of swordsmen in a way, only it's a little different. I, I think this is the first devil fruit user Zoro has encountered who actually uses swords. So this is going to be, this is, I'm, I'm going to be interested for this. And I like what Oda did. You know, Oda did something similar with Sanji where you had somebody with a similar fighting style. Now you have it here. And then when you look at Nami, it's the same thing. Nami is fighting someone with a similar style, you know, sneaky, sneak up on you, spikes. You know, the weather rod. I mean, this this makes sense. I like what he's doing in terms of pairing. Now, to progress further in the character development, Here I'm going to be talking is about Usopp. Usopp tells lies, okay? We know that. Part of why I said fuck you, because I was like, man, he made Nami some cold shit. And it was hyped up. That's, why I, that's really why I said fuck you. Because it was hyped up. Because he gave Nami that damn weapon. And he said, hey, this is specially made for you, okay? And I thought, damn, this is going to be really good. And it's supposed to be, you know, changing in battle and everything. And as soon as she says, this controls the weather, I went, oh, shit. This is one of those Usopp classic tales. But given the way that Oda's done this shit in the past where Usopp says, yeah, I ran into an island that was really goldfish poop. And then we actually saw it. So... I'm thinking Nami's going to get this weapon later on down the line or this ability or some shit. Like, it wouldn't surprise me given the way Devil Fruits are like fucking Super Saiyan transformations where everyone has one. It wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if Nami ate a fucking Devil Fruit and that, that ended up being a power that she can change the weather. And it fits right into the whole thing of her being Luffy's navigator. I could totally see this shit. I could see this being foreshadowing. But how Usopp got his character development is we know Usopp experiments and he makes his different exploding stars. But we actually saw him in his element and we saw that he takes great pride in his work. Like we know that, you know, the storytelling and everything, it, that's his character. Lies, if you want to call him that. But for the most part, I haven't really seen him as far as the pride aspect. Yeah, pride in Sir Village, but like pride, pride. And just seeing this... He takes a step further because he tells Nami, hey, are you saying I can't make this? You're really saying I can't make this. It's almost like he was saying, bitch, get the fuck out of here. Kind of like how uh, Mr. One was like, I can't stand chasing after this chick. Bitch, come over here. It's just like the Mortal Kombat dude, uh, Scorpion, was like, get over here. That type of shit. So that was cool. I like seeing that part with Usopp and it really makes him relatable because... 
when I see Usopp doing that, you know, he's already in his element working. He's trying to do something to help his crewmate. You know, Nami gives this uh, little co conversation speech, if you will, basically saying that she doesn't want to be useless and she wants to be able to help others in battle. And that leads me into Nami's whole character development. But Usopp wanting to help, even if he trolled her, that, that's a step for, for, for his character. As far as Nami is concerned, great character progression because we see the internal monologue she has after she runs away where she's like, look, like I, Vivi is, you know, fighting for a country. My crewmates are fighting. I don't want to have to depend on other people. And you can just see her building up her courage. And if you just look at it from a pacing perspective, we're not that far removed from Arlong Park. And I think that that is huge because the thing with Arlong Park is we saw Nami's character kind of change. And we find out, oh, she's double agent, but you know, Luffy ends up getting her back. But in the head, like, I don't know how much time has passed. I would guess a few months. But the thing is, is just from a storytelling aspect, it hadn't been that long ago. So Nami, for the most part, could still be, I wouldn't say under all longs control, but still suffering from some self-esteem issues from that, you know, like her character still being built up. So just to open the chapter and to see Nami saying, I can't run anymore to fight these guys and look and then run again. It, it's very in character because Nami, for the most part, she's been running ever since we got introduced to her, you know, either running towards uh, the next treasure, running from her past uh, with All Long Park, running from what she had with Belle, running from Luffy, like, uh, she's always been running in some figurative stance. And just to see her finally get that point, she stops running. And then she gets met head on. That was good. That was good. I really feel like this is going to be the fight. This is going to be the start of the, of Nami just growing all the way up. This is going to be good. I'm going to keep my eye on this. You know, Oda is getting into some Togashi level uh character development so i've got very high expectations for this and i mean it makes sense one piece has been god what like 15 16 years like one piece has been around and from what i've been told it's showing no signs of stopping so this is this is gonna be interesting if nami takes a step for for now i've gotten character development out the way i know i usually just mix all that in i felt like there was just so much of it in uh, in this chapter that it needed to be addressed early on and instead of mixing it in, it just needs to be a separate part of the review. I know I used to do a recap, throw some stuff in there, and then ask a question. I wanted to kind of do this. I could do my arc reviews. So with that being said, just moving into the chapter itself, was very impressed with the whole thing with Zoro, where you know Zoro meets Mr. One. Mr. One says, "Yeah, I ate the devil fruit," and Zoro isn't backing down on that. That was that was cool. I don't expect Zoro to run from a fight. But knowing that he's fighting a Devil Fruit user and really just knowing the fact that it's another swordsman and this is the highest ranking member, it's going to be very interesting to see how Oda puts this up. Is Zoro going to struggle with him? Or is Zoro going to fight evenly with him? Is Zoro going to just dominate him? You don't know because Zoro is a wild card because this guy trains so much. You have no idea what type of power he has. I really feel like we haven't seen his full potential in a fight yet. You know, when you make certain decisions, like he did against Buggy the Clown, he made certain decisions and got stabbed, so he couldn't fight at his full potential. Same thing with All Long Park. I don't feel like we saw him at his full potential yet because he made certain errors beforehand. With Nami being out of the way and with him fighting on his own, and nobody to kind of hold him down. I could see Zoro going all out and maybe even dominating this guy. So this is going to be cool to go forward and see. You know, I did say that I felt like Usopp doing the whole uh, weapon with Nami was trolling. But I laughed my ass off. Like when Nami is like, oh, this controls uh, the sun. And then fucking pigeons fly out. This is a storm weapon. And then fucking flowers come out. Nami slams that shit. And Miss Doublefinger is just like, this poor girl. And Miss Doublefinger's ability, I said it was similar to Nami with the spikes and stuff, or with the with the staff she has. Well, with the spikes, the reason I say that is, is 
once again, this is a dueling type environment. You know, like the only difference is is uh, Miss Double Fingers. She can fire those damn things like projectiles. But Nami can kind of swat them down with a staff. I mean, this this is interesting. This has a lot of potential. I really feel like this could fuck around and be one of the most underrated fights. And really, it's just 190 chapters in the 189 chapters before this. I really feel like this has some potential. I'm not too sure. This isn't my Nami bias in here, but any fight that shows character progression or shows the hints of it, you have to pay more attention to it as a reader, and especially when you read it critically, because it's fights like these, particularly in shonens, that make the characters and set them on the trajectory that's going to make them the character they are headed into the final arc of the, of the manga. I know I'm nowhere near that, but it's just something to keep your eyes on. So my chapter question for you guys, uh, I would say, what did you think about Nami and her going to Usopp and just wanting a weapon and wanting to be able to contribute in some type of way? And what did you think about Usopp trolling her? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, hit that like button, comment, rate, subscribe, share. I'll greatly appreciate it. Again, I know this is a little unorthodox for these chapter reviews, but I just had to make a change for this one. But that's it. Thanks for watching.